I got a lot of stuff happening in this machine. It's harder to get to than I than the time. All right, so let's start today, Alice. Today is a benchmark day for the Chattics. Yep. For the benchmark day for the Chattics. So there was a time exactly nine years, four months, and three days ago. Mm-hmm. Where one Alice Magnolia Shattuck pushed her betrothed, shoved him <laughs> across the room. We lived in Melrose. I went flying onto my back. I broke my back. I slipped discs, and that was a physical violence. And that told me that I had gotten myself into something that uh, maybe I wasn't ready for. Now, fast forward to today. For the first time ever, for the first time ever, mm-hmm. you physically assaulted me. What's it called? Preemitated? Preemitated? Pre-emit- <laughs> Premeditated. Premeditated. You thought about it. You stewed. You created That's a fist. That's not what happened. You wound up and you punched me. That's not what happened. I, this is a first. All. This is a first, Alice. <laughs> it's, it's, Let the record punch show. Anybody. Yes, he did. Stop. And you own you seethed with your evil <laughs> Serbian eyes and you you looked at me I didn't and you said, Oh, to you. that look. Oh, that look. Goodness. Can you imagine that? <laughs> if people uh, are interested, <laughs> what happened? Well, the incident you're all, referring to with the pushing, first of all, mm-hmm. is that I was at the bathroom sink, trying mm-hmm. to do something at the bathroom sink. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what, like take off my makeup or something before bed. And you came and attempted to grab me and accost me, so I pushed you away it's from called, me. It's called foreplay, mon <laughs> dear. Well, I rejected it. Well, apparently, yeah. <laughs> With the nuclear option. I just pushed you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you shoved me across the room. Was alcohol a factor in your balance, would we uh, say? Was it a factor in your assault no, and rage? No, I just pushed you back from me and you drunkenly tumbled backwards. If I was temporarily uh-huh. disabled, then I think that that means that I shouldn't have been a target, but you sought me out as a target. Today. So today in the car, I was sitting there sipping my drink in the car next to you, and you smacked me in the face out of nowhere, pushing incorrect. the drink into my face incorrect. and getting it all over incorrect. my face. Yes. This is what happened. This is what happened, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and I believe that this will, right here, I can rest my case. We were talking about how Alice parks selfishly. She parks selfishly <laughs> in the driveway. We have two two exits in the driveway. One oh, is, it's my it's fault. A corner you hit me in the It's face? a corner lot. Two exits in the driveway. One brings you to a, a leafy suburban cul-de-sac road that can peacefully go on to the main road. One is like Route 1 in Massachusetts where it is a death trap. If you go onto that road <coughs> and take a left, then you've got to go from 0 to 85 in four seconds. And it doesn't matter. People are coming around the corner anyway, and they still may kill you. It's a death trap. Alice, because she doesn't care, just points the car down to the death trap way, even though I've got a, she knows we have to take a left and it's harrowing for me. I explain, I make sure to park in ways that are accommodating so that my wife and kids won't die. <coughs> Every day. She doesn't care. She just drops <laughs> the things right in the middle. Of the um, I just so parked today, the so car. Once, so I was telling her this when we got in the car today. once again. driving oh, kids oh, right, 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 that's right. So I came home too. Back. I know. I, I know you were always saving the world. This is such an allostatic <laughs> thing. She was always saving the world. Selflessly came home. With kids, for all the way from Connecticut. To I know, I had four there kids was and no, a dog in the car. Was, we had been to there karate. There was no other I way was... to park. They had been to karate. My <laughs> goodness, the Ukraine war is happening right now. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff happening here. There is no way she couldn't have parked in the death-defying, uh, you know, dangerous way. So she, last you night You could again, have backed up the driveway she, and turned she, around and gone that I, way I did, My car to parked badly. responsibly out of the way. I had to unload a lot of uh, stuff with the kids to get. I wanted Jesus. to be close to the door. Mm-hmm. What is so difficult to understand about this? Mm-hmm. If you wanted me to move you the car earlier the car, in the day, you could, you could just have asked me. You could all, no. So I do it for you without ever asking. You could also just point the car in the other way, go up the other way, and be in the same proximity to the door. You can but just, no, you no. Can just ask me it doesn't to park matter. Cars in my, because you Alice don't felt that she had, that she had single-handedly <laughs> finished saving the world. I get to park anywhere I want to. That's everybody. So anyway, as I told her this today, as we're getting in like the car, that? as we're getting in the car to get weighed in at our place, I was telling Alice this, and then I pulled down to the street because she's parked in the death-defying way. Pulled down to the street that's uh, where cars come around the corner from the right, 
at 180 miles per hour and can just level us. There's no, they don't care that there's a sign that says slow down. They don't care. They just fly around the corner. As I'm pulling down, Allison cocks her head back with her trough full of <laughs> diet juice <laughs> and obstructs the rest of my view. I then push her away from my view because I'm trying to survive and make sure the kids yeah, don't die. Push me away in the Meanwhile, face. Meanwhile, she's picked this moment to go, oh, I'm the biggest, the, the biggest possible obstruction she can be because she has to have her picture of stuff at well. the base of the driveway. I push her back. She claims that it shoved her huge trough <laughs> bottle into her face. And then, as we're driving, she decided to, oh, my God, you hit me. Oh, my God, you shoved the thing right into my face. And that became, I hit her, which, of course, there was no hitting. So you're I saying I had it coming, uh-huh. Right. So that's when she decided to stew for a moment, clench her fist, and just freaking haul off and punch me, which that's I've never had. That's not what happened. I did not punch you. Is you you uh-huh. kept saying you didn't hit me, and I said, no, you absolutely didn't. Right. I said, you went like this. And I reached over and tapped your face gently in the area where you would just hit me in the face with my no, own drink. I got a hit hit. In the face. No, no, that is not true. So here's the important part. It certainly wasn't a punch because a punch is okay, close. Okay, here we go. And it was here we not. go. She's copping to some charges now. <laughs> no. She's willing to make a plea deal. No, I okay. tapped you ta- with an that's open right. hand. That's tapped. right. That's right. My head recoiled like I got in Louisville sluggard in that the cranium not true. because I got a tap from my You're wife. Such a baby. Oh okay. my gosh. But, and then, and this is the real problem today, okay. and this is where the consternation has set in here, and this is... Oh, What's the real problem? This is ugly. So then... Uh-oh. So then we go to the weigh-in. Uh-oh. And what was my previous weight, Alice? They weighed me in first. First of all, I thought I, I, thought I broke the machine because I did things wrong. I put my hands in the thing. It wasn't... Go to the weigh-in. Your previous weight was 345. 345. And and now I am 336 and change or seven. Whatever. I'm almost nine pounds less than, uh, over a little week. Now I'm going to pause for applause. No, from everybody. I'd like applause. And I'd like to, everybody to say patronizing, condescending things about, oh my God, you got this, Tom. I want to hear, I got this, Tom, more and more. But that's not the point. The point is, isn't that I lost my nine pounds. The point is that I beat Alice <laughs> by a lot. I only lost two pounds. Tossed two pounds. And it's that, not fair. Right. It's not fair. Well, I worked what? so Alice, hard. You know what? Healthy I living. I made all the foods. Healthy living. I measured your vegetables for you. I measured your salad dressing mm-hmm. with a tablespoon. I, I did all the work. I did all the work. So because she's an AP nerd, she feels that this is her... Doing all the work for everybody in the biology group. In the group project. In the group project. Group you're, project. Just, you're just coasting off of mm-hmm. my hard work. Well, uh, you know what? It's a little easier for me to coast these days being down nine pounds, Alice, where you're only down two. So uh, I would say now I think it's fair to say I am thin. <laughs> I'm begin to, I'm, I will begin to change my attitude and be snooty and judgmental <laughs> about things. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I want to be one of those guys who wears super... Skin tight shirts too, like Simon Cowell used to do. But that's it. So that's one of the reasons Alice has us consternation against me. And uh, by the way, here's my rule: nobody tell me if I'm losing more. If that actually happens again and I lose my nine more pounds, no good. That a boy, Tom. No, you got this. Because if you say you got this, then I, I, I hate you anyway. I don't deserve any positive reinforcement for my for- being less of a frigging pig. For a few days. I don't deserve anything. If anything, you should, if you see me somewhere, like at a grocery store, you should just give me a medium to soft beating. Really. There should be no... Because the person who just complained that I gently tapped his face today. It's different, Alice. You have priors. These people have a clean slate (laughs) with me. So that is that, and that is where we are today. Let's see. Oh, another thing, reason why, when we go down to... um, Another reason it's good is... Oh, is that just reflex that you're sneaking in your coffee drink? <laughs> no, I was on camera for that coffee oh, drink. Oh, okay. Um, here's another. I am th- trying to be quiet so I don't make too many swallowing noises into the mic because that's something else you criticize me for that I now have a complex about. Good. That's a good complex to have. It'll make you friends. <laughs> You'll save friendships. Um, so here's the other thing is that... Oh, yeah, that's right. When we do three days a week, then it'll be... I was thinking tonight, it's like, um, what's her name? Bridget Phetasy has a great 
has a great Substack about being a slut when she was in her 20s and 30s. That's her word for it. Mm-hmm. And and I think that it's, you know, she was so, and this is just a very popular, this is, a lot of women have this thing where they're, they have lower self-esteem or whatever, and just, it's your 20s. Everybody degrades themselves in their 20s, and I think it's probably especially women, especially she couldn't really keep control of, like, drinking and drugs, so she'd end up just more feeling like hell and ending up waking up next to some idiot. So, but it is interesting how, you know, of all the, it is interesting how, like, the, I would love to talk to her about that. And, and not the X's and O's, but just how, like, just imagine that being a woman who, you know, a lovely woman in your 20s, like you were a lovely woman in your, in your 20s who threw it all away for, for a reason you shouldn't have been. But um, but doing everything you can to have a great attitude and look so good and whatever, and hanging with the boys or whatever, and you hook up, and it's all on you. All the shame, et cetera, belongs to you. And the guy is just on. To, we're on to Seattle or wherever. We're on to Cleveland. You know, it's just it's. I, I believe I was a young man who really wanted to do the, hook up as much as possible. Who at the end of the day. Did not hook up as much as possible. Well, I, I guess I hooked up as much as possible, but the possible mm-hmm. was really limited. But still, it is such a two standard system. But I mean, I think that's because women shouldn't be playing that game. Yeah, men are sluts. They yeah, are. it was stupid so, feminism that told women that they right. should do that, and it feels good when it doesn't feel good to women to do that. Right. It's just it's. It's like a what a terrible lesson that was, and like he, if I know that it's just people in my generation and and older as well, needlessly went through this like routine of of just being underserved by by guys. It's, it's like man, and it doesn't take much. I mean, you know, it's I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to act like I'm 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 coming off like Alan Alder or something. I just. I just think that, and re- you really were like as a as a young guy in groups, you really would think less of the girl who was with everybody, even if she was awesome, right? Even if she was awesome with the best personality and beautiful, etc. Well, it, guys tell this lie that feminism has embraced that guys will like you if you hook up with them, and actually, the truth is the opposite. Of course, guys will love the hookup; they'll love the your physicality. As it's happening. But that then guys they are... will like you personally a lot less after and respect you a lot less. Right. I mean, and... it's so trite to say it, obviously, but, yes. like, but it's actually true. Like, And I don't think that, uh, that that great important truth of life is told to young women enough post the sexual revolution. Like that he's really not going to like you more. Like he's acting like he really wants you to hook up with him. Right. But... He, and saying that he's going to like you if you do, or implying that he'll like you if you do X, Y, Z, but it's actually the opposite. Like, then he'll actually not like you. I think that that's, that's almost always true. And I think part of the thing is, not almost always, because I don't want to, because something, you never know. Some things, some things stick and some things don't, etc. But... You have traded the physical intimacy. There is nothing more that a man is looking for biologically than that physical intimacy whatsoever. And you've traded that away early. So a a guy would think, well, I hate to, I mean, I don't want to put this in in a crude way, but it's like this she, she, in a sense, I don't know what this. Like this person has been. I, I'm, I'm trying to put it in a way that's that, that's not crude, but it's. There are no more. There are no more mysteries in one huge category of that relationship. Already. Mm-hmm. All, gone. And so, 
for guys, especially young guys, they're looking for the next person to enjoy the mysteries of. Right. Like, why would they? So what's wrong? The best thing was all the awesome stuff physically. What's What are we going to talk about her dreams on the right. next date? It's like, it's all downhill from there. Unless you're in love or unless whatever. It just, I, I'm, 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 tr I'm just trying to get back in the head of, of somebody in his, in his 20s. I mean, especially since, you know, we, uh, you know, I, I was in, friends of mine were people who wanted to be in love in our early 20s. We wanted to be with somebody beautiful, intelligent forever. A lot of times we would just look around and see that the beautiful, intelligent women were tr just treating themselves terribly, hooking up with losers and idiots who cast them aside. And that made a lot of us just say, oh, okay, so there is no, it, they, you, you, I guess you just cast them aside. That's the etiquette. And that's what you do. Anyway, the whole thing is, there's a reason why... Well, yeah, and, I mean, even even the fact of... there, There's a little bit of, like, the Groucho Marx never be a member of any... Never be a part of any club right. that'll accept you as a member. There's something about, like, even somebody you really, really like um, actually, you know, acquiescing that... I think even though men think that that's what they really want, like I think at some level men do think that, but I think that um, what's happening with my noise? I hear okay. it else. Okay. Um, even when men think that's what they want, there's a little bit of it, it tarnishes the beautifulness and intelligentness of the girl that she would just, if she's easy and would just sleep with you. Uh, yes. Because it's like, what kind of person would sleep? <laughs> like, well, right. And also, it's like, oh, this, I felt, as a guy, with a girl, this, I feel, is kind of sacred. But, oh, I see you, the girl, really don't feel it sacred. Right. To so you, you just toss this around. Mm hmm So, so anyway, anyway, I, I just thought about that. Anyway. that. And that's one of the reasons that I want to be able to. I, I want to have more time so I can book guests. Here we go. As in, I entered a week two of not having another freaking Substack done, but that's fine. It's my own fault. Um. So, but this brings me to everyone's like kind of in a tizzy about Andrew Tate. Have you heard of this guy? I must have heard of him. Who is he? He's a manosphere influencer. Okay. <laughs> He's one of these. Um. I don't know. He. He's an American British kickboxer and self proclaimed trillionaire. Oh, somebody told me about him. He was last on Big week. Brother. Right, and somebody, he got yeah. kicked off Big Brother because a video came out of him hitting a woman with a belt. And he says it was taken out of context and totally consensual. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's fine. Um, but he's made a ton of money off of uh, managing women on OnlyFans, hmm. which some might describe in a less flattering way um and uh you know so uh he would uh have the girls live in with him and work with him and run like webcams on only fans and the women would like do the webcams and tell these men on the cameras that they had like ill family members and college debt and you know do these like sob stories to get the men to give them a ton of money which he and his brother took a cut of and i assume hooked okay. up with the girls and he uh moved to romania because apparently and he says this because um it's uh, easier to get off rape charges, he said in Romania. So, um, so class act. <laughs> really, just all around. He calls himself a top G alpha dog and bad boy. Um, but he, you know, he's really just pushing a lot more of the same like pickup artist stuff, you know, that like women who hook up, whatever. But he has all kinds of controversial takes that uh, have to do with. You know, so, for example, one of his comments was on a 10-year-old boy who was in the newspaper because he could recite pi to the 200th digit. Mm -hmm. And he said, I saw some effing kid in the newspaper the other day who can recite pi to 200 decimals. That's nice, but you look like a geek, so who gives an F? Because you ain't going to get laid. You're going to go to a club, start reciting pi to a hoe? You cannot just go through life, I'm a smart guy. It ain't enough. 
Why is this effing moron anything? It's funny. I had a couple of people a few weeks ago tell me on, on the other on radio He's shows trying say, to get, say like, I should be into him. Check out Andrew Tate. Oh, I There's thought it was a, a woman beating thing. I'm like, eh. Yeah, he also, he's challenged, like, Jake Paul to fight him. So, he also doesn't think women, uh, if you're in a relationship, that they shouldn't have any female friends. And the fact that she wants to have female friends is disrespectful. I understand he's putting hot takes out there to troll, but this guy sounds highly uh, uncreative and like a moron, an adult. Uh, he also feels it's allowed for men to cheat as long as they're not in love. That if he just goes and has sex with girls, it's and fine. I'm so sick of okay. So, so it's all the for things the, for the fourth uh, decade in the world. Somebody's coming, trying to come off as the world's first original uh, badass cad. Like, so, but whatever. apparently there's a bunch of like TikTokers who think, like especially girls who think this is like really profound and interesting stuff. Um, so. Girls are asking their boyfriends if they know Andrew Tate and what they think of him, or girlfriends asking their following if it's time to cut things off after their lover boy listens, watches, and follows Tate's ideas. Tate has gained a following so quickly it seems as if overnight girls have started ditching their dudes over the star's ideas. Video after video, post after post shows what impact this former kickboxer has had on young men in just a short period of time. So a bunch of these young men are trying to like do this, and it's becoming like a big thing, and he's trying to get all this attention. He wants to box with Jake Paul or whatever one of those people some youtuber thing so anyway i don't uh i uh like men to be masculine but i don't subscribe to most of that and i think he's a uh, kind of a trash person also apparently um yeah i i'm not into it but um but you know if you're into andrew tate let us know but I, I just think that this stuff is so obvious once you've been around for a while, the sort of, um, like, that men don't like girls who sleep around and girls don't really like sleeping around. and mm -hmm. I mean, like, that kind of stuff. So it's like if you get a hint of that, then it seems like you're saying something profound and then you just use it to justify this other stuff that you think is, like, you develop this weird philosophy. But it's completely, it's not original 75 percent of it is not even true or useful information to people who actually want the kind of life that you would think that they want like if you want a nice girl then like that's this isn't gonna do it for you yeah. either you know i just the idea that that young people think this is great is incredible to me because it's like it, it well, it's I, not I mean, new they, no it's not new that's the most disappointing thing it's not just that it's a stupid self-destructive decision but it's just it's there's nothing original about somebody coming off like a crude boorish jackass no everybody's done i mean like the movie hitch with will smith where he like plays a pickup artist and kind of like a nice pickup artist but like where it kind of explores that idea that came out a long time ago because this pickup artist stuff has been around for a long time mm -hmm. and like it's and since the internet there's been a bunch of people who have done it some better than others but it's you know it's not creative that's for sure right all right, um, to get people excited about pizza, Papa John's is offering a new spin on the classic with Papa Bowls that are all topping, no crust. Tom Shattuck says, fantastic. So one of the best, I think it was a keto food I made ever, was the um, was a pepperoni pizza casserole with, mm -hmm. you know, all sorts of different uh, oregano and basil and garlic and uh, mozzarella cheese and... Um, and sauce, crumbled sausage. It's, it's gorgeous. And tomato, yeah. it was gorgeous. It can't be keto, actually. Nothing. It certainly wouldn't be available for what we're doing now. No. But it's gorgeous. I, if you want to get rid of the crust, I'm all for it. The crust has always been a hindrance. In t a thin crust pizza is the only way to go. Obviously, I think anybody who loves like thick crust, who that person did, as a matter of fact, Alice, that person who I, whose name I... Mm -hmm. Like a puffy crust? Oh yeah, like that's the thick gross. crust, where especially mm -hmm. where the stuff's in between, like Chicago style. Oh, uh. that's awful. Like that's the the biggest impediment on Chicago itself is that it does everything right, but that pizza is <laughs> it's an, an people abomination. People swear by it. Yeah, but people, gen most people have terrible um, palates. Yes, palates. That's right. That's right. Um, what else we get? Should we hit to the children's hospital stuff? We hit children's hospital yesterday. Oh. 
Okay. Well, then, how about this? How about this, little lady? Okay. I don't want no problem with you since you already slapped me once today. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to this right here. <clears throat> Ready? The best thing about the left, of course, is when they are on the cusp of infighting. From crust to cusp to infighting. Dateline, Cody, Wyoming. Wind energy boom and golden eagles collide in the U.S. West. Dun, dun, dun. This is really happening, which is kind of awesome in a way. I love gold, uh, the eagles. I love them. I like bald eagles, I love too. These are golden eagles. Oh, sorry. I love them all. Dateline Cody, Wyoming. <laughs> the rush to build wind farms to combat climate change is colliding with preservation of one of the U.S. West's most spectacular predators, the golden eagle, as the species teeters in the edge of decline. Uh-oh. Ground zero in the conflict is Wyoming, a stronghold for eagles that soar on seven-foot wings and a favored location for wind farms. As wind turbines proliferate, scientists say deaths from collisions could drive down golden eagle numbers considered stable at best. Yet climate change looms as a potentially greater threat. Uh-oh. Conflicted. Rising temperatures are projected to reduce golden eagle breeding ranges by more than 40% later this century, according to a National Audubon Society analysis. What a vicious cycle. Yeah. Maybe you, just don't kill them to, in the wind turbines and let's see what happens you with have their to kill, territory. No, the, you don't understand, Alice. The, the rising temperatures are projected. Projected. Mm -hmm. When were the polar bears you know supposed not to not have a home anymore? You know what's not projected, mm -hmm. Alice? is the huge turbines slicing the eagles in half. That's not projected. That's happening. Yeah. So that's Rising what I mean. Like, let's start with the yes. problem that we have right now, and then we'll deal with the projected problem down the road. The, listen, this horse. Listen, you, you have mm -hmm. to be in the left to, to deal with this. Yet climate change looms as a potentially greater threat. Rising temperatures are pro projected to reduce golden eagle breeding ranges by more than 40% later this century. Later this century. According to a National Audubon Society analysis, that leaves golden eagles doubly vulnerable to the shifting climate and to the wind energy promoted as a solution to that warming world. You know what they're um, doubly vulnerable to, Alice? Uh, more wind turbines? No, meddling psychotic progressives. <laughs> if we just left this crap alone, then the eagles could fly into eagle stuff and it'd be fun. We have some of the best golden eagle populations in Wyoming, but it doesn't mean the population is not at risk, said Brian Bedrosian, conservative director at the Teton Raptor Center in Wilson, Wyoming. As we increase wind development across the U.S., that risk is increasing. Turbine blades hundreds of feet long are among a myriad of threats to golden eagles, which are routinely shot, poisoned by lead, hit by vehicles, and electrocuted on power lines. The... <laughs> The tenuous position of the golden eagles contrasts with the conservation success of their avian cousins, bald eagles, whose number has quadrupled since 2009. But, uh-oh, here's a little movie that comes with this. I saw this guy earlier today. Wind energy, golden eagles collide in the west. Uh-oh. Is he not going to talk? Uh, he'll talk. Here we go. Of it. We don't want to wait until the species is endangered. Golden eagles are flying they don't necessarily perceive this gap between the turbine blades. And so as they're flying through uh, and the turbine is spinning, it strikes the eagle. And the collision with wind turbines for a golden eagle is usually fatal. Wind I'm power is eagle. one of many threats to golden eagles. Oh. Rising temperatures from climate change I also don't even, reduce... Like, I mean, are wind turbines even that useful like because they take a ton of fossil fuels no. to make them and you have to like drive them to where they go and then you have to set them up and then eventually they like rust out and stuff so they have a lifetime is it i mean do they does the saved energy over the lifetime of the thing actually it's work a out warming planet house many threats to golden eagles rising temperatures from climate change also reduce their breeding grounds Rising temperatures from climate change also reduce their breeding grounds. Shouldn't that be projected? Well, but I would like to know. I, so it, it reduces their breeding grounds? So is rising, rising temperatures are doing what to the golden eagle population? Nothing right now. Right. Right. Since wind energy is one of the most promoted solutions to climate change, it gets complicated. Bet it does. You created this complicated world. 
when you decided that we could, by having big windmills in the air, that we could change the climate. And we don't know that that's true. In fact, it seems like it would be bizarre if that were true. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's the problem, right? Is like we think that if we tinker enough at the edges of what we do that we can solve every problem. But the truth is that we're like really, really bad at fixing things in nature. I mean, we're even pretty bad at fixing things if you look at stuff like the government does where, you know, it the government tries to incentivize certain behaviors and stuff that the government is like really, really bad at getting people to do what it wants them to do and at projecting how its policies are going to actually impact people and play out in real life. The government is terrible at this kind of tinkering. And that's with human beings who are like way more predictable than nature, which is, you know, wild and uncontrolled. And we don't know how all the things work and fit together at all. I mean, at least human beings, we like sort of know how other human beings minds work. But like just the fact that it didn't occur to them that these wind turbines would be killing birds left and right is embarrassing. But but I mean, like we've always had this where well-meaning scientists will like introduce some species to get rid of some other species and then it like becomes invasive and ruins all this other stuff. Like the ecosystem is a very delicate balance, right? And like everything we do messes it up. And it's like one of those things where it's like the more you screw around with it, trying to fix what you've done so far, the more you mess it up. So maybe you should just take a back seat and leave it alone and just try and like, you know, plant nice trees and stuff and and leave the meddling with the nature alone because because we always make things worse. It's like a law it's like a law of nature. Whenever we screw around with it, we always make it worse. We just don't have it in us to to make anything better by our Correct. own by our own really smart devices. Correct. Dateline Columbus, Ohio, Alice. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Let's see if I get right to this. All right. Hold on. Um, ready? Uh, okay. You know, I was I was scared at first, but I, then again, I'm not. I wasn't very surprised. A fork and a side of marijuana. One man found more than he ordered at the bottom of his bag delivered by a DoorDash driver. Did this start with the driver, or did this start in the restaurant that I ordered it from? Um, which makes me question, it's like, where, where are these drugs coming from? While Columbus police tell me they do not know the answer to those questions yet, the man involved says the driver came back asking for the pot. He would give me my money back and refund me my order if I um, gave him my entire bag back. Let um, me guess. Because he claimed that the, there was medicine in the bag for his friend uh -huh. uh, that was to be used for medical reasons. And what'd you tell him? I told him, no, sir, I can't give it back. After the driver left, he called police and submitted a complaint to DoorDash. Knew DoorDash it. <laughs> sent him this email saying, quote, we do not condone this type of action and have therefore taken this step in removing them from our platform. This Dasher will no longer be able to deliver Dasher. future orders. But it's scary because I'm a healthcare worker and I see how this affects people every day. Um, I even had a close friend whose nephew um, actually passed away due to smoking some marijuana that was laced by fentanyl. And he worries what could have happened if this order ended up in the wrong hands. I think about little kids. I have a nephew. I think about my coworkers, um, his granddaughters and grandsons. Now he's feeling hesitant about ordering dinner to be delivered again. I really feel like I'm, I question everything now. Um, and I just, I just want certain companies like DoorDash or Grubhub or what others, I just want to question, you know, what kind of background checks they're taking for their employees and do they really know the people who are working for them? All right, Alice, how would you categorize this fellow? A rat. <laughs> he is a piece of sh is what he is. Okay. This, first can of you all, imagine? <laughs> first of all, you... I'm betting it was something else that was laced by fentanyl, not marijuana. I have not heard really of an maybe. Maybe I'm just out of the loop and innocent. But like, right. I mean, that's horse but, bleep. Whatever he's but, in healthcare, that's whatever it was. Okay. This but guy like, is the. He is what is wrong with society. I'm sorry, sir. I right. can't give this back to you. Imagine that, you effing rat! I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> I have an excuse to call the police now. Can you imagine <laughs> that, you effing rat? 
Oh my god! So happy with him. Now I question everything. So I question content. what somebody oh smoked weed. Oh my god! Weed. His world, his universe of uh, dashers now is uh, come crumbling <laughs> down even, around him. I don't even like weed or whatever. Like mostly, I don't think people should probably smoke it. But I like. What type of people do you think are DoorDash delivery drivers? Like, like white collar professionals? What a rat this guy Mormons? is! Mormons? I don't a know. Filthy like what? rat! I hate this <laughs> SOP. He's a huge jerk. He's a huge jerk. Ah. Oh. I love that this guy's n- named nowhere in this. Of course, he should be named. He's just a rat. <sighs> oh God! You know what? I'm gonna do those so- two stories tomorrow on the show. Good. I think you should. Um, so this I actually sent to you, and then you sent me an Ann Coulter column about it, like you discovered it and it was new. I did. But I had sent you this previously, but um, the city of Minneapolis has signed a new teacher's contract. And I sent this to us a few days ago too. Uh, I don't think you did. I don't know about that. Okay. Um, this article from the root is dated Tuesday, August sixteenth. Um, okay, so. Basically, the new teacher's contract says that teachers are laid off in order of seniority. You know, like the newest teachers get laid off first, except mm-hmm. if they're a minority. In which case, they get a je- get out of jail free card to not be laid off in order of seniority. So, I mean, obviously, this is just only a matter of time until a white teacher gets laid off who wouldn't have been next in line if it weren't for this policy, who's going to take it to the courts and win because you can't fire people based on race in the United States of America. That's just not allowed. Um, And it seems clear that if you wouldn't have been fired if you were a person of color, then it's obviously a firing based on race. It, It clearly is. But, I mean... So I it's I think it's going to end up in the courts sooner or later. But um, The Root had this piece about it that was saying that this is um, a good thing because more teachers of color in the past have been laid off in the Minneapolis mm-hmm. public schools when they just do it in order of seniority, which is believable to me because probably more of the older teachers are white and more of the newer teachers are uh, people of color, right? Sure. So, which is why we shouldn't lay teachers off in order of seniority anyway. We should lay them off in order of how bad teachers they are. Right. Like, but the whole system is I'm stupid it. anyway. Do it, do it by race. That's great. <laughs> so, I don't think that's going to hold up in court in the long term. I just have a feeling. Are we going to do? Uh, I think it's wonderful. Are we going to do any chat chat, or are we going to do our Patreon bonus show? We're going to do a little bit of chat chat right now. And then we have to get right over to Patreon, and I wish we had more time, but we just don't have all that much time. I'm sorry about that. We're trying to get more time. We're working on it. We're working on it. All right, Allison. Here we go. Rub oil on me. Jesus Lord. <laughs> Sick bastard. That is not true. That is nobody I know. Hey guys, it's Danny. Hey Danny. Uh, I just Hi. got back from a trip out west. Nice. Uh to Napa, California. Not Ooh. quite Redwood City, but uh I did see a few vodka trees out there. Here we go. <laughs> uh interesting that Alice was mentioning how many masks she saw in Connecticut. Uh, they were obviously everywhere in Northern California, hmm. especially closer to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, at one point, I was getting in an Uber with two of my colleagues, and uh, the Uber driver was masked up, no problem. But uh, the, my two colleagues get in the back seat, no mask. I get in the front seat, no mask. And the Uber driver turns to me and says, you need to have a mask to sit in the front seat. And I said, well, what about the people in the back seat that are, one of them sitting right behind you? He said, no, nope, they don't need one. I said, well, all right. Do you have a mask I can wear? Not really wanting to argue. And he said, no, get out of my Uber. Oh, so beautiful. They're obviously following the science out there in wine country. Oh, my God. That's science. Oh, what a POS. COVID only goes left to right. It doesn't go imagine? forward I out of your mouth. I feeling mouth. that guy called the cops on his dasher just uh, <laughs> days before because they left some weed in his order. Hey, Tom and Alice, I didn't know if you n- ever uh, noticed the show, um... Uh, a league of their own it's uh i guess it's kind of sort of based on the film with madonna i don't know uh i don't remember any uh lesbian acts in a church going on in it hmm. um but yeah there's two characters that are lesbians in it while well, their husbands are fighting in the war 
they're just lezzing out. So uh, mm-hmm. it was it was just like, okay, wow, you mm-hmm. Hollywood, you're like really getting pretty desperate here. All uh, right, very typical, Bye. very typical wife activity uh, during the war, whatever. It took, yeah, right? I mean. So this is interesting, and I appreciate the call, Justin, because, uh, you know, we had talked about previously our daughter's really into softball, into, like, have letting her watch the Madonna movie, A League mm-hmm. of Their Own. And I had noticed that there was this new show of it out. Uh, I think it's, like, on Amazon or something. Um, so I had wondered if that was any good. But thank you for the review, because now I don't think we'll be watching it. No, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I mean, but like, regardless. why? I did like Mulholland Drive. That said, there why? is a place for that. Obviously, why do they always have to like push this into every movie? I don't. It's know. like literally every one. It's like the new Dumbledore movie or whatever. It's the yeah. Buzz Lightyear movie. It's the it's internet. The, it's all. They all have to be have something gay in them. Like, anyway. That's it for today. We are going to do our extra Patreon show now. Maybe Tom will let me talk about Liz Cheney, even though he does. I know he doesn't want to talk about it. We'll see what we talk about over on Patreon. And uh, you can always find all our free shows at burnbarrelpodcast.com. That's also where you can leave us a chat chat message. There's a red button that you can use to record. And you can talk to us on Twitter at burnbarrelpod and facebook.com slash burnbarrelpodcast. Say la vie.